Hello, my name is Matthew Panikar and I'm one of the senior solutions architect in the Dynamics practice at Eclipse Computing. I'm pleased to present to you today the Microsoft Dynamics 2013 web client and limited user functionality. Okay, now this slide gives us a good representation of the different ways the Microsoft Dynamics NAV application can now be accessed. Basically, apart from the more traditional Windows client, there are two additional ways of accessing the Microsoft Dynamics NAV application. One using the web client, which is what we are going to focus on today, and also using the SharePoint client. So what is a web client? Web Client enables users access to Microsoft Dynamics NAV functionality from virtually any device with a web browser. The web browser capability enables many exciting possibilities for our customers by providing the Dynamics NAV application access to more and more end users. The new Web Client is optimized for small role centers and users who do not perform heavy data entry. Now, most of the functionality is available through this interface. However, some system performance may be affected depending upon the activity carried out. It also gives customers more flexibility about how they choose to deploy their product and provides the employees with an interface that makes sense and adds value in the context of their job roles. Okay, so what are the benefits of having a web client? So some of the key benefits are outlined in this slide. And 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 because the web client is just an HTML based application, there is zero deployment efforts. It supports various browsers and devices like Internet Explorer, Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. And, and there is also support available for extranet and intranet deployments. You can use your URLs to open Microsoft Dynamics NAV content, and the installation is pretty simple. Only IIS is required, and most importantly, you can get more value out of your existing technology investments. Okay, now we are going to have a look at the web client functionality using a few web browsers like um, Internet Explorer, uh, Chrome, and also using Safari and using an iPad emulator. Now, I'm going to take you through this first using an Internet Explorer. And I've logged in, as you can see, in my Internet Explorer interface as a salesperson. And what I want to do is actually go and update some master record information. Now, I have been notified by my one of my customers that their telephone numbers have changed and what I'm going to do is open up their master record in this instance it is progressive home furnishing and I'm going to update their phone number to the new phone number so as you can see it is a simple interface to use and once I've updated the records get synced back into the database okay now having looked at the Internet Explorer interface I'm logging in to my uh, Chrome interface of the web client. Now again, um, in this instance, in this example, what I'm logged in is I'm logged in as a salesperson and I want to be able to go and update some additional information on one of my sales orders. So I can see all my sales orders here, which is um, uh, which is on my dashboard. I can click on them and it takes me to the list of sales orders that I've got open and I'm just going to select one of my sales orders 1001 and what I want to do is change the delivery date of this order from the 23rd to the 21st and as you can see the moment I um, tab off it is asking me if I want to update the lines and that's exactly what I want to do so I have come in and used the Chrome interface now to actually update a delivery detail on my existing sales order okay now having looked at uh, an Internet Explorer and a Chrome interface what I want to do here is log in using a Safari browser into my iPad interface as you can see I'm just typing in my address details of the NAV website and again I'm logged in using the same login that I have used for Chrome and Internet Explorer and and what I want to do in this instance is update one of the sales orders for a new line my customer sports Meyer furnishing has advised me that they need also another line item in that existing order 1001 so I'm going to look up for my product and in this case I just want to put in the normal bicycle that they've asked for and go ahead and put in my additional order and it tells me about some quantity shortages and which is exactly what I want so that I can give some sort of commitment to my customer around the availability of that product okay 
As you can see, the web client allows the application user access to whatever information they want and whenever they want it. Now, what are the key changes in the licenses for NAV 2013? Now, with NAV 2013, the user licenses have got simplified to a full or a limited user license model. The full user gives access to all read and write solution functionality through any mode of access, and the limited user functionality provides users full read but limited write capabilities to all of the license solution functionality, and again through any mode of access, including the Windows client and the web client. The limited user is designed to give customers a lower cost alternative for extending the ERP to users who only need to use and perform certain tasks like read data access into the ERP solution through the client and also write access to time sheeting. The write access through any client accessing the ERP via the application has been limited to a maximum of three table objects in any number range with some exceptions. Okay. So now that we have had a look at the benefits of the different ways we could log into the Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2013 web client, let us look at some other additional functionality that could be potentially used through a web client. First, let us look how you can go and create a sales order for a customer using a web client quickly. And I can do that through my homepage using just one click. So I'm going to log into my NAV 2013 web client interface using Internet Explorer. So again, I've logged in using uh, my salesperson login. And what I want to do is create a new sales order. So in my homepage, there is a shortcut to create a new sales order. I click on the new sales order link, and it comes up with certain default header information. I know which customer the sales order is for. So I select uh, my first customer list here. And as you see, the header information is populated. And in this case, I want to be creating a sales order for a normal touring bicycle and as you see as I progress through that screen I just put in the quantity and I have now created a new sales order using my web client now let us see how we can create a web requisition using a web client the web requisition functionality is a very popular add-on that we sell here in Eclipse computing now I'm going to search for my uh, requisition page using this search option here. And once I've located the form that I want to open up, I'm just going to click on that. And the requisition list opens up here. I'm going to click on a new requisition and toggle through all the rec required fields. And in this instance, I want to purchase an item here and that item is it's a new Mercedes so I'm just gonna click on that and as you can see the default information has been populated here and I want to buy that for my blue warehouse and I'm going to use it personally so I'm just going to buy one of them and in this instance because as you see here the requester is myself and I am special and I've got access to approve my own requisition and hence this is all what I need to do to actually go and transfer this to a firm purchase order however um, if in a real life situation you may have a different hierarchy Again, the key benefit of using this is one, this functionality can be used under the limited user license and two, they can be accessed from the web client. Okay, now having looked at uh, how to create uh, a sales order and, and create a requisition, let us look at how we can use the same interface to create a timesheet. Again, I'm going to search for my timesheet page and I come back into my search option. And once I've located my timesheets, I can select the timesheet that I want to update. And in this instance, I want to update my first timesheet for Mary. And having located that timesheet, I can click on the timesheet and make necessary changes. In this instance, all I want to do is add two hours on that job that I was working on and also go and update another six hours for a service order for that week. Again, the key benefit of using this is one, this functionality can be used under the limited user license, and two, they can be accessed from the web client. Now that concludes our webinar for today. I hope this session was helpful. Thank you.